But you just got here. The Leafs have made another trade. But let's go back first. Just before this past summer's free agency period, the Leafs made a trade with the Chicago Blackhawks. The Leafs traded forward Victor Stahlberg and prospects Christy Domenico and Philippe Parody in exchange for... Chris Versteeg. Well now, 53 games later, fun fact, 53 more than Martin Skula, the Leafs had traded Chris Versteeg in exchange for the Philadelphia Flyers' first and third round picks in the 2011 NHL entry draft. Which means maybe, just maybe, people will quit it with the lame first round pick jokes. Myself included. Here's what Versteeg did in Toronto. With 14 goals and 35 points in 53 games for Chris Versteeg this season, he produced about at the same pace he did in Chicago. Except you look at his plus minus, which can be a misleading stat. He was always a plus player in Chicago, Minus 13 in Toronto. He logged a lot of ice time on Toronto's power play, playing at the point. Didn't play quite as much on the penalty kill, but he did that too. He came into the season with so much promise, you could see how fast he was in the preseason, playing on what was predicted to be Toronto's top line of Tyler Bozak and Phil Kessel. And by the end of his tenure with the Leafs, Versteeg was playing more like third line minutes, third line duties anyway. And the Leafs have needed offensive talent all season long, and after they got Joffrey Lupul, that made this trade possible. But if we're going to assume that Joffrey Lupul and Chris Versteeg are the same talent level, which is unfair and probably wrong, you got to assume the Leafs aren't done making moves. In fact, during the media conference call to announce the Versteeg trade, Brian Burke had said that the third round pick from the Philadelphia Flyers has already been offered to another team. And for now, they're keeping the first round pick, but he's willing to move it. And with two trades in six days and still two weeks left before the trade deadline, there's no way this is it for the Leafs. And as Burke has said during the conference call, the Leafs have not given up the last playoff spot, nor will they. And you would think that a team trying to make the playoffs wouldn't make a deal like this. So something's got to happen, right? Because keeping both of these picks isn't Brian Burke's endgame, so you can't really analyze it like that. A way you can look at it is did the Leafs get fair value for Versteeg? Well, a first and a third is always welcome, and it's about what the Sens got from Mike Fisher. But because Philadelphia is doing so well, you're looking at that first rounder going like 25th to 30th, and it's been said that this draft year isn't supposed to be quite as strong as ones in the past. But what I'm starting to hear is it's not so much the draft is supposed to be weaker as much as it's supposed to be less predictable. So who knows? But I'd be surprised to see either of those picks survive the trade deadline. And about Chris Versteeg, you guys might remember me saying this earlier in the season he just seemed to lose his swagger you know here's this young exciting hockey player he's rapping in the dressing room they win the cup he's rapping in front of two million people he's for beauty why do i shake my head when i want to signify rapping but in toronto you just see it on his face just Eh. But looking down their roster, if there was ever a place to get it back, it's Philly. Well, that's going to be a little awkward, eh? Hey, Philly, sorry for crushing your hopes and dreams in the finals last year. So good luck to Christopher Stieg on a now stacked Philadelphia Flyers team. And guys, now it's your turn. What do you think of this trade and why? Because I'm reading some of what you're saying, and a lot of you hate the deal, and a lot of you love the deal. There's no real in-between. But with February 28th still two weeks away, this could get interesting.